This is going to be a study on King Manasseh. He was one of the most wicked kings, if not the most wicked kings in the Bible. You can find his story in 2 Chronicles 33 and 2 Kings 21. Something interesting about Manasseh is that he wouldn't have ever been born if Hezekiah, his father, hadn't have prayed to God for extra life, to stay alive. In 2 Kings 20 and verse 6, God adds 15 years to the life of Hezekiah. Manasseh, Hezekiah's son, was 12 years old when he began to reign in Hezekiah's stead. This means that Manasseh was born three years after God added the extra 15 years to Hezekiah's life. Sometimes an answered prayer isn't a good thing. It wasn't in this case, because it resulted in Judah's most wicked king. I don't believe Manasseh started out as righteous before God, but I would like to get some practical application for the Christian from this story. I want to look at the life of Manasseh and compare it to the life of a disobedient Christian. And the first thing I'd like to point out about a disobedient Christian is that they are acting like a babe in Christ. Although they may have matured in the Lord, they have gone back gone back, and are acting like a baby Christian. So Second Kings 21 and verse 1, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hephzibah. I hope that's pronounced right. Notice that he was only 12 years old when he began to reign. He was very young especially to be a king. And if you are a Christian, then you are a king. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, He hath made us to be kings and priests. If you are newly saved or haven't been in the word of God much, then you are a babe in Christ. You are young in the Lord. So in a spiritual sense, you are a young uh, Christian like Manasseh. We also need to realize that Manasseh can't blame his wickedness on his upbringing. Although Manasseh probably isn't righteous, he probably doesn't fear God, doesn't care about God, Hezekiah was a godly king who raised him right. Manasseh was just a rebel and brought shame to his parents. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29 or Proverbs 19, and verse 26, He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. A good way to honor your parents is to live right. But Benassi brought shame to his mother and Hezekiah. If you are a disobedient Christian, then you are acting as if you are young in the Lord. You are bringing shame to the name of your teachers, your preachers, your parents, your spiritual mentors. And number two, a disobedient Christian follows the world. In Second Kings 21, 2, it says this about Manasseh. It says, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Manasseh did the things, the abominations that the heathens were doing, the heathen don't know God. They didn't know God. While Manasseh was raised to know God, the God of his fathers by Hezekiah, he was perfectly aware of the wickedness that was going on and he rebelled against God anyway. The born-again Christian today who is worldly has the Holy Ghost convicting them of their worldliness. They mostly, most likely have had heard Bible preaching they drive down the road and see signs for churches and all these reminders that they should live a godly life. Disobedient Christians today will follow the world to the same movies, the same music, the same wicked clothing stores, and so on and so forth. And then 2 Kings 21.3 says, For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, and as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. So he built back up the wicked things his father destroyed. 
instead of making progress, he backtracks towards the devil. Instead of following his father's example, he follows Satan's leading. Compare this to a backslid Christian who won't follow the godly instructions of his spiritual father or pastor. If your preacher warns you about going back to the wicked music and alcohol and pornography, and you go back to those things anyway, then you are building back up the things God brought you from. Let's read about the wicked things Manasseh did. And notice that there are 13 evil things that Manasseh does. And 13 is the number of rebellion in the Bible. Second Kings 21, 3-7 says, For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son passed through the fire, and observed times, and used enchantments, and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever." So he reared up altars for Baal, a false god. He made a grove, and a grove is a place where they would put their idols or altars for their false gods, and they would worship these idols in these groves of trees. It also says he worshipped all the hosts of heaven. People do all of these things today. They have just renamed the false gods. They do things a little bit differently, but they're still worshipping false gods. Today, these gods have names like Eminem, LeBron James, Katy Perry. They are called stars, which goes along with the host of heaven. All these celebrities are called stars. Manasseh was worshiping the host of heaven. So you see the connection. Also notice verse 6 says, Manasseh made his son pass through the fire. This means he sacrificed his son to a false god. And people do this today in abortion clinics. They are sacrificing their unborn child because they don't want the inconvenience. They are, they are their own God. They don't want to inconvenience themselves. And they sacrifice the life of their child to keep living their precious life. Notice also that Manasseh used enchantments, dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. And all of these things are accepted today. The kids' movies have wizards, magic, and witches. The country is wicked and worse than Manasseh is. We have had the Bible written out in plain English. It tells us these things are abominations and they are accepted anyway. The disobedient Christian will follow these things even though they are wrong. Number three, the disobedient Christian defiles the temple. If you look again at verse 7 in Second Kings 21, it says, And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, while I put my name forever. While Manasseh was committing spiritual fornication, when he put a graven image in the house of God, a Christian defiles the temple, when he commits literal fornication. 1 Corinthians six eighteen through 20 says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The disobedient Christian can defile the temple of God just like Manasseh defiled the temple. Number four, a disobedient Christian can be a stumbling block to others. Second Kings 21 9 says, But they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them. Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than all than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. 
so worldly Christians can seduce other Christians into becoming disobedient. Notice that Manasseh is a seducer. The Bible says evil men and seducers show acts worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. If seducers are going to get worse, and Manasseh was this bad thousands of years ago, then how bad are they now? People think it is far-fetched for the government to be against God, and they will call you a conspiracy theorist for believing this. But the Bible says in Psalms 2-2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So there are conspiracies mentioned in the Bible. The rulers of this world are led by unclean spirits. Manasseh was most likely under a lot of spiritual attack and he gave in to the unclean spirits. And a disobedient Christian can lead you into wickedness. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. If you listen to the philosophy of someone who has adopted the world's views, then you will get worldly. And there is always a consequence to living wickedly. Paul says in Galatians 6, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And God will judge a worldly Christian and possibly turn him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Now look what the consequences were for the sins of Manasseh. If you look at 2 Kings chapter 21 verses 10 through 15. It says, And the Lord spake by his servants the prophets, saying, Because Manasseh king of Judah hath done these abominations, and hath done wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria, and the plummet of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt even to, unto this day. So God gets angry at sin and full of wrath Manasseh and the people did evil in the sight of the Lord, and it provoked him to anger. And God sees all the sin, and he can see every sin you commit. And Manasseh is so wicked that he calls all the people to err and do even worse than the people who don't even know God. He made them do worse than the heathen. Chronicles 33, 9, So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And some Christians can get so mean that you would think they were more mean than a lost person. A Christian can get worldly, get out in the world, you can't even recognize they're a Christian. And when God punishes the disobedient Christian, the right response is to humble himself and turn back to God and don't despise the chastening. Proverbs 3.11 says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. And now let's see the right response that Manasseh gives to the righteous judgment of God. If you look at Second Chronicles 33.10, it says, And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. And you know people love their sin when they don't hearken to the words of God. And then in verse 11, Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. So Manasseh humbled himself. Even though he was the most wicked king that Judah ever had, 
He comes to God humbly and asks for help and forgiveness. And the right thing for a disobedient Christian to do after God chastises him is to come to God humbly and ask for forgiveness. I know that Manasseh was not a, a saint or anything before this. I'm just getting application from this for Christians today. And 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we do this to stay in fellowship with God. Nothing can change the relationship between God and a born-again Christian. You will always be a son of God, but you can get out of fellowship with God. And notice God's reaction when Manasseh came to him in prayer. In Second Chronicles thirty three thirteen it says, And prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. So he brought Manasseh back into his kingdom. Just like God will let a Christian back in fellowship with him when he comes to him and confesses his sins. And if a Christian will stay in fellowship and live for God and not the flesh and suffer with Jesus Christ, then he will reign over cities in the millennial kingdom. And after Manasseh is back in his kingdom and right with God, he builds a wall. In Second Chronicles thirty three fourteen, it says, Now after this he built a wall without the city of David. So after the disobedient Christian gets back in fellowship with God, he needs to build a wall of prayer around his life. He needs to get back grounded in the words of God so that spiritual wickedness in high places doesn't take over his life anymore. He needs to put on the whole armor of God as a defense against the wiles of the devil, as the Bible talks about in Ephesians 6. Second Chronicles 33.15 it says, And he took away the strange gods and the idols out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord, and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, and sacrificed their own peace offerings and thank offerings, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Not only did Manasseh build a wall, but he also cleaned house as the disobedient Christian should do himself when he gets back in fellowship with God. He should get rid of the wicked movies, the music, and all the abominable things in his house that's just going to lead him back into sin. Clean out the pantry and the fridge. Get rid of any alcohol or anything like that. Anything that's, that's sinful or causing him to sin. Also, not only can you apply this story of Manasseh to a disobedient Christian, you can also apply it to a lost person who is abnormally wicked. If there is a person who is a serial killer, a pedophile, a Satan worshiper, a blasphemer, a heathen who comes to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner, can be saved. The story of Manasseh shows the long-suffering and mercy of God. It took 55 years of Manasseh reigning as king before anything was ever done to punish him. In 2 Kings 2.16, the Bible says Manasseh's hands shed innocent blood. And that is one of the things that the Lord hates, as the Bible says in Proverbs 6.17. And this further proves the long-suffering and mercy of God. Although Manasseh got right with God, this doesn't change the effect his sin had on other people. Just as today, when a Christian messes around with sin, it affects everyone around him. That's why the Bible says in Romans, No man liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. What you do affects others, especially your own children. If you read Second Kings twenty one nineteen and 20, it says Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Meshulamith, the daughter of Haraz of Jotba, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. So he did evil just like his father. I'm sure a lot of that evil was because of Manasseh, the way Manasseh raised him. So you can 
be influenced by others, influenced by the other people you hang around. If you act wicked in front of people, then they may be influenced by you. But this has been a lesson on Manasseh and on a disobedient Christian. If you're not saved, the best thing you can do is come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner you are. No matter what sin you're presently committing, no matter what kind of sinner you are, you could be a serial killer. You come to God right now, ask for forgiveness, ask God, say, I know I'm a sinner, I know I deserve to go to hell, and I know that you died for me. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross to pay for your sins. And if you do that, then God will save you and you can go to heaven when you die. The gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried, and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. If you will believe that, putting your trust in that to get you to heaven, then you will be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. The Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible's true. Jesus Christ saves. You need a Savior because you're a sinner. And I hope you will get saved before it's too late.